World, welcome to a, another Thursday live Facebook video from Beer Cartel HQ. My name's Jeff Hewins, uh, co-owner of Beer Cartel. Um, these videos are typically a session where I tell you through, take you through all the new beers that have arrived during the week, but this week I'm going to do things a little bit differently. So some of you may be aware that probably about two or three months ago we started um, the Australian Craft Beer Survey of 2016, the first piece of survey research that we know of that has surveyed a very large population of the Australian craft beer drinking community. And today, in today's video, I wanted to share you some of the results, um, hand out some awards to some of the highest rated or most liked um, breweries and news websites and the like and also announce at the very end, I will announce the winner of the $500 worth of craft beer. So at, for all those who participated in the research, um, they all, you guys all went into the draw to win $500 worth of craft beer. So the one winner will be announced at the end of this video. So first off, a little bit of background about the video. So Richard and I are both market researchers before we started a craft beer business called Beer Cartel in 2009. Um, and being in research, we always wanted to apply what we knew from the corporate world um, in marketing and market research and try and understand more about uh, you guys at home so that we can uh, better cater for the things that you guys are after and we can also share that, um, that knowledge and the passion that we have uh, for craft beer uh, with the brewers around Australia. Uh, and so that they can continue to brew great craft beers that you guys enjoy to drink at home. So that's a little bit of background. We surveyed a total of 6,500 people around Australia, so in all states, territories. Um, it's quite a large sample size or quite a large number of people. Um, and from our research days, if you ever got something that was over a thousand people, uh, you were quite happy. So we used to do research for the likes of Telstra, Combank, um, and other big national companies, and they would sometimes even struggle to fill quotas of a thousand. So they get six and a half thousand of you guys. It's fantastic. We really appreciate you guys participating, giving us your feedback, um, and we will be sharing that. It's 100% free. We're going to be sharing all the data with everyone um, that did participate. So, a couple of things. Unlike census fail on Tuesday night, our survey was not hacked. Uh, we don't have egg on our face like the Australian Bureau of Statistics uh, and everyone was able to access the survey. So we didn't make any excuses. Uh, we didn't say that, uh, that what the site is down or the survey is down and post the survey as I mentioned after this video, not only we announced the winner, but we will also post all the results on our website. So keep your eye out for that and you can head over to the website after this video. Now during the survey, as I said, we collected quite a lot of information about your preferences, your attitudes, your, your sort of behaviours towards craft beers, the styles that you like. Um, and we also collected information about the uh, things like the, the best uh, craft brewery, uh, the best beer styles, um, the best news websites for craft beer and the like. And we want to hand out some awards for those people that uh, came first in all, all those um, as voted by you or as surveyed by you. So the first one I want to do, this is for as voted by you guys or as surveyed by you guys, over six and a half thousand craft beer drinkers. We asked them which was Australia's favorite craft beer state. So drum roll, hope, maybe, hope you guys can hear that and my beautiful assistant. Thank you very much. This is for the best craft beer state. And the winner is Victoria. So congratulations to Victoria. I'm sure the Victorian Tourism Board will be stoked to know that they are, they've been voted as Australia's best craft beer state. So there's no surprises that Victoria is up there and is uh, very highly regarded as some of the best breweries come out of Victoria. So if you think of the likes of Moondog, Mountain Goat, um, and, and Two Birds, which are kind of central to Metro Melbourne, um, those guys are producing some very, very good craft beers. And then outside of that, you've got the likes of um, Mornington Peninsula, down on the Mornington Peninsula, Red Hill Brewing, uh, and Bridge Road Brewers as well. So all very, very highly rated craft brewers that definitely do come out of Victoria. 
They also have had the scene going on a little bit longer than other states like us here in Sydney and New South Wales, uh, whereby they probably, they're probably a few years ahead of us. And uh, they also have a government that's probably introducing laws that's a bit more conducive to small bars and enjoying um, either a couple of wines of an evening with some friends or a couple of good craft beers. So to us, no big surprises that Victoria has come out on top. Um, and big congratulations to all those Victorian brewers and the state of Victoria. Let's pop that one aside. Uh, you also have some very, very good uh, craft bars down there. So you've got the likes of Beer Deluxe and the Tap House, um, and you know, a lot of small bars that are kind of uh, also catering for everyone's wants and needs with regards to craft beer. The second award. So this is the second award is for Australia's favourite craft beer week. So around Australia, you've got uh, Brisbane, they've got a craft beer week. WA has got one. Uh, Sydney Craft Beer Week is about to come up in October. Um, and Melbourne's got one as well. So you've got all these little craft beer weeks that are happening around Australia. Uh, obviously typically happen for a full week. Um, and there's usually quite a lot of events that happen around that. So we asked six and a half, over 6,500 of you out there, uh, which craft beer week was your favourite um, and the winner is so this is for the favourite craft beer week in Australia so Australia's favourite craft beer week we present this to Good Beer Week. So again, in Victoria, congratulations to the team behind Good Beer Week. They have uh, continuously improved Good Beer Week um, and uh, definitely do a very, very good job to get the breweries and the local scene behind them. Uh, originally started, I think, about four years ago, if my memory serves me right, maybe, maybe even a little bit longer. Um, and... I do know I haven't actually been there for a full week during a good beer week. I was there at one of the very, very first ones, uh, and there was actually a mini festival held by um, Beer and Brewer. And I do know that the, even back then, this is in 2010 from memory, uh, they were doing some very, very cool things, and all the venues get behind it. Um, and it's a bit like the Melbourne Cup. So if you've ever been in Melbourne during the Melbourne Cup, everyone's happy, everyone's out about. Uh, everyone's smiling and craft beer week if you are a craft beer supporter uh, i highly recommend uh, good beer week down in victoria so that's two gongs for victoria or, or things that happen in victoria um and just on on the note with regards to good beer week in victoria it actually ends with gabs so gabs is the great australian beer spectacular um, started by the guys from tap house a few years back um, originally only happening down in Victoria. Um, last year they started doing them up here in Sydney. But the Gabs in Melbourne happens at the end of Good Beer Week. So it culminates, you've got all the, all the festivities and whatnot, all the other events, and then you have Gabs. Now, again, I haven't had the joy or the pleasure of being able to go to a Gabs Melbourne, but I have heard that um, a lot of the beers or some of the beers that they are able to source for Gabs Melbourne Unfortunately, never make it to Gab Sydney. So it's definitely on my radar and it should be on your radar too with regards to um, a, a beer week to go to. Other beer weeks, if you can't get to that one, obviously Sydney Craft Beer Week, there's WA Craft Beer Week, uh, there's the one up in Brisbane as well. Um, you can just, uh, if you just plug in Craft Beer Week, uh, quite a long list of them will appear in Google. So that's two awards. The third award that we would like to um, present tonight uh, again, when we surveyed 6,500 craft beer drinkers around Australia and we asked them their favourite craft beer news website. So this is a website that is dedicated to um, providing you with the best craft beer news within the industry. So it's not just industry specific, yet. you don't have to actually work in the industry, um, but it can just be about latest beer releases, uh, the going-ons uh, with regards to new breweries starting up um, and say collaborative brews and whatnot. So this one, again, drum roll for it, please. So this is for the favorite craft beer news website in Australia. As voted or as surveyed by you good people at home, 
we'd like to present this award to the Crafty Pint. So the Crafty Pint, headed up by James Smith. Uh, James also had quite a lot to do at the uh, starting off of um, Good Beer Week down in Melbourne. Uh, he's a very, very good guy. Uh, he does quite a lot within the industry, especially down um, in Melbourne. Um, so big congratulations to you, James, for uh, winning Australia's favourite craft beer news website. Uh, they were a close, uh, there's a couple others, and we're also going to present the best beer blog. Um, Australian Brews News also came uh, very close in, in the listings uh, from memory with regards to the best craft beer news website. So if you're wanting to know about the latest releases, beer jobs, if you're wanting to get into the industry, I highly recommend you get onto the Crafty Pint newsletter. You can just go onto their website um, and you can just register for their newsletter and get all the news and uh, news and brews of latest things happening in the industry your mail every week. Uh, James also a bunch of roving reporters, so he's got uh, Nico here in uh, in Sydney, uh, a couple of guys down in Melbourne, South Australia, Queensland, some states are roving reporters, and they go out to bring you the latest news with regard to events, new bars that are opening up, new breweries that are opening up, new beer releases. Uh, so again, a very, very good uh, point of call with regards to getting all the latest news in the industry. So, the next award that we would like to present. Uh, so this is, as I mentioned, we did the, the best um, beer news website. This is for Australia's favourite craft beer blog. So when we surveyed over 6,500 of you um, craft beer drinkers there at home, we asked you which one was your favourite craft beer blog. So, drum roll again. So, the winner for this... Australia's favourite craft beer blog goes to The Beer Pilgrim. So, some of you may read The Beer Pilgrim's blog. Uh, he's very, very good behind the camera as well. As well. So, uh, this is Tim Charity. Uh, he's got beautiful long locks as well. He's a good, good strapping young lad. Uh, he's very good with the lens, uh, and he uh, does some fair writing as well with regards to craft beer. So his job is basically to go around uh, and review beers, new breweries, talk about beer, drink beer, talk to people about beer, talk to brewers about beer. Uh, he's talking to us about beer. I'm sure he's talking to some of you guys there at home about beer if you've ever seen him. Uh, you can often see him at different craft beer festivals behind the camera. Uh, so the Beer Pilgrim, I highly recommend. Again, he's got Instagram, he's got the blog. Um, if you follow him, you'll also be kept up to date with regards to the latest going-ons in the industry. He's also recently uh, done a bit of a trip over to Europe. Um, and I'm just going to read this just so that I don't get things uh, wrong. I mean, it is a Belgian brewery, so I should know this almost back to front. Uh, but he's got a very, very good... Uh, Good um, video with with uh, the owner of De Glazen Dochen, which is uh, basically a, a world class maker of saisons, based in 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 Belgium. They're in the northern half, so you may remember from some of my previous videos. That's the Flemish part of Belgium, um, and that's with Jeff Vandenstein. Um, so go onto his either his blog. I'm sure the video is there. It's definitely in his Facebook feed. It's a very uh, very cool. Um, video where he interviews the owner Jeff uh, and Jeff's just sitting there in a singlet uh, He's an ex-mathematician from from memory um, and he started a brewery um, And he makes some very very good world-class saison. So we often stock some of their uh, some of his beers um, They're definitely worth seeking out if you do like saison, but um, yeah big shout out to you Tim uh, Congratulations for the win um, keep up the good work. We love what you do. We love the photos. We love the beer writing. Um, and it is definitely a place that we go to with regards to finding out uh, about beer around the world and here in our homeland in Australia. So that was the fourth award. Now, the next one is actually uh, probably the biggest award of the night. Um, and this, again, it's when we surveyed over 6,500 people with regards to uh, the best craft brewery in Australia. Um, some of you will see this as controversial. I know whenever Gabs comes out and the beers get rated and 
uh, something comes first and people are saying, oh, this should, should have won. Um, surely this, this should have been better than that. Uh, I'm sure this is going to raise a bit of controversy. I can say that it was a very, very close race. Uh, there was uh, more than a handful of votes, but still very, very close. Um, now, it could be very easy for me to get my assistant to uh, give me an envelope, but I thought I'd do something a little bit different. So we're actually going to call the brewer. And let's see if you can guess who I'm dialing in here. So I'm going to call them live. Here we go. Hopefully this works. Got on speaker, that's a good start. Oh, bit of an international tone. Hello, Brendan. Hello, Richard. No, it's Jeff from Beer Cartel. Oh, Jeff, how you going? <laughs> Good, thanks. Yourself? Yeah, well, thanks. I am calling from Richard's phone. I've got you uh, oh, live. Okay. I've got you live. We're doing a live Facebook broadcast. And uh, okay. I just wanted to say a big congratulations because you've been voted or surveyed as Australia's best craft brewery. Oh, fantastic. That's great news. Yeah. So, uh, you, I don't know if you're aware, but we did a big survey with regards to try and understand different behaviours and, and attitudes and perceptions of craft beer in Australia. And uh, one of the questions we asked, which was uh, which was the favourite craft brewery, and uh, Feral was uh, voted number one or surveyed as number one. Oh, that's fantastic news. And I know of the survey, I was actually... Um, pretty interested in seeing what kind of data you would come out of that. Um, I, I, I didn't know, I didn't see what the questions were or whether you were asking about favourite breweries, but uh, hey, that's that's uh, really pleasing news for us. Yeah, I think it. Uh, I mean, I guess it. it um it kind of you guys have won quite a lot of awards over the years uh, yourselves and Stone and Wood. Um, kind of always battle it out for first and second. Yeah, we do. Um, you're just breaking up there, Brendan. You there? So we had an international dial tone. Did you say you're in Germany? Ooh. Hello. Yeah, that's better. Right? Yep, that's perfect. Yeah, mate, I'm having a I'm having a hell of a time with the reception here in Germany at the moment. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I often we, I often think we actually value the consumer uh, chosen uh, awards like this a little bit more than perhaps the the beer awards where it's you know a blank beer being chosen because because as a business we know we know what our beer is and, and that, that it's up to our standards. Yeah. Um, we perhaps we perhaps don't consider ourselves um, a brewery that puts as much resource and effort behind the marketing as, as a lot of others. So, so, to, so to see that there's some genuine um, understanding of what we do uh, and then the work we do to make really good beer from consumers is, you know, really pleasing. Yeah, I mean, there's, I've kind of, uh, I mean, Ferrell was on the scene before we started our business here, um, but I do know that when we first started and we were trying to hunt down uh, Ferrell, uh, it was very, very hard to get in the eastern seaboard. Um, it's near on impossible, to be honest. You there? Yep, still here. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. Um, uh, yeah, look, it was only four years ago we, start, we started our, our production brewery. Until then, we just had a little brew pub in the Swan Valley, and it was very much expected. We had a share of the, the good beer venues around the country. Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd expect in the last four years we should have become a bit more available and uh, if people want to find out there now, it hopefully uh, isn't too hard for them. No, the distribution has definitely gotten a lot easier. Um, I know that one thing, I remember you telling me very specifically, it was a night at uh, Hart's Pub, you may or may not recall. Uh, it was after 
some event, I think it was uh, maybe an awards event, probably back in about 2010, and you told me about how very uh, specific you were with the quality of your beers. Um, tell us a little bit about your philosophy with your beers and how you maintain the quality. Yeah, I guess we've, we, we really restrict our, our distribution to areas and, and regions where we think we can get our beer delivered to the final consumer the same way that it tastes when we make it and pour it at our, at our home base in the Swan Valley. So distribution is a big part of it. We know, we know our beer is up to spec and, and, and up to our, our standards when we release it from our brewery door. Yeah. It then becomes um, caring about it across the distribution channel to ensure that the same enjoyment from drinking that beer is, is achieved by someone wherever we sell it. So whether that be Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, it, we want it to be the same beer that they're tasting in the Swan Valley. And, and with the types of beers um, that we predominantly make, um, and, by, and by that I, I guess we're talking about uh, heavily or more heavily dry hop beers, that... Uh, it's not an easy thing to achieve, yeah. and and so getting back, I guess, a little bit to your um, your first question or, or the previous question about availability. The availability is really restricted by our ability to be able to get it to the final consumer in you know the same shape it is when it leaves our brewery door. Yeah, and I guess that is uh, some pretty big kudos to you and the team. Uh, in, in wanting to be kind of uh, restricting that because it does make your product shine um, and it is probably also the reason why it, uh, you guys do get rated very highly uh, and continue to always show up in the top sort of, well, definitely the top 10 and uh, almost always in this kind of top three. Top three, yeah, I, I think so. Um, and for us, it's, it's kind of really good... Um, validation, I guess, of, of the fact that you, you do concentrate on the beer first, and um, you, you you put that and its quality at, at the top of your, your totem pole of, of what you want to uh, achieve, then then consumers recognise that as much as they may do a you know a really good social media campaign or other promotional work or um, you know even price based stuff. We, well, we certainly know our beer is not always the cheapest um, on the shelf. So the fact that you know quality will actually cut through and, and get some recognition and some support from consumers, I guess, is, is really good validation for us. Yeah. Now you're in Germany at the at the moment, so some of our our uh, people on on uh, on live Facebook might just be tuning in. Uh, tell, are you on a reconnaissance mission in Germany to find out find some new tricks of the trade to do something new with feral, or what's what's planned? <laughs> No, not so much that. Um, <laughs> although you know, to, to, you know, we don't get a lot of really well-made lager in Australia, so I certainly take the opportunity to invite in that whilst I'm here. Yeah. Um, the reason for the trip, though, is we've got some new new packaging, um, a, a magic packaging upgrade happening in our brewery um, in the back half of the year. So it was really final inspections and factory acceptance tests on on a new bottle filler and a new can filler and a few other little bits and pieces of um, beer packaging equipment. So if you didn't catch that at home, so uh, Brendan uh, from Ferrell is talking to us from Germany uh, where he's just, uh, we just announced to him that he's won Australia's best um, craft brewery uh, as surveyed in our national survey. Um, and he's just revealed uh, that, so obviously they've got bottle product, but you said the word cans. So you're going to release some beers and some cans. Yeah, we did. So the first two beers, and, and, and we'd expect them to hit shelves, you know, um, mid to late November, probably by the time it gets to the East Coast. Um, the first two beers will be um, our IPA Warhog, um, and also our, a bit more sessionable beer uh, in Sly Fox. Okay, so Sly Fox and Warhog in cans probably around November, just before Christmas. That That's sensational. That's it, yep. We hope, yeah, that's, that's our timeline, and we're going to fight hard to keep that one. <laughs> You've tried to commission or introduce the the new canning line, and I guess commissioning it is always uh, you always got to add a bit more time from from my knowledge of the industry and the beer industry. Yeah, I, you're right. But in in this instance, you know, we've gone with some really experienced um, 
bit more high-end German manufacturers rather than um, some people that have only been in the game in a few minutes. So they've been making these these machines for 100 plus years. So yeah. our hope is that you know, given that we've we've gone for certainly some fairly high-end equipment, that that the installation and commissioning should be a fairly smooth and um, and quick process. Right, and the Warhog is that going to be just a just to launch the cans, or is that going to be a permanent fixture in the uh, feral lineup? Yeah, no, that's it. That'll be our first permanent can. First, first oh. permanent beer in a can will be Warhog. There's, uh, I'm sure, there's plenty of people uh, smiling at home with that, uh, because I know when we when we got the limited release uh, bottles, uh, probably what uh, three four months ago, uh, they didn't last long. The the um, the love affair with hoppy beer and Australian beer drinkers is is pretty well documented. Uh, no more well documented than, than by our sales guys. If we release uh, a one off or special release beer that that isn't that isn't hop driven, uh, they seem to have a real fight on their hands. But as soon as we we indicate that it's heavily hopped and, and dry hopped, uh, they can just put their feet on their desk and it tells itself. <laughs> Well, fantastic. I really appreciate your time, Brendan. Um, I don't know, it's morning over there, so you've probably got a day of exploring and a day of uh, checking out some new lagers and, and sampling some of the local wares. Yes, we do, yeah, a little bit of that. Uh, they had a brewery manufacturing project signed off for a future project as well. We've got a uh, good fun day ahead of us. Fantastic. Well, I won't take any more of your time. Big congratulations again. Um, I think it's uh, awesome recognition for the work that you and the team do. Uh, we look forward to the releases that will be coming up in a couple of months' time. Um, and, yeah, I look forward to catching up soon. Mate, thank you. Uh, it was great to chat to you. And thanks to everybody out there who supports us by drinking our beer all day every day. Fantastic. Thanks, Brent. Talk soon. Bye. And that was Brendan Varis from Feral Brewing. Uh, so we've just announced that survey your favourite brewery would have come first. Uh, uh, there's a lot of good craft breweries out there in Australia. Um, Feral's been doing good beers for a number of years. Um, big kudos to those guys, Brendan and the team. Um, I look forward to the beers that they're going to release uh, in Cairns. So if you're just tuning in, they just said that Warhog and Sly Fox will be released in Cairns in about November. So if everything goes to plan, he's over there in Germany at the moment. He's going to uh, research and install a new canning line. And if all commissioning goes to plan, November's the date for those beers to be in Cairns. So that's good. We're big advocates for Cairns. Survey results that you'll see um, is kind of split. People are a bit neutral about cans and bottles. Uh, you'll be able to see that in survey results just after this video. Now, this is probably another moment you guys have been waiting for at home. As I mentioned at the very start, um, everyone who participated in the survey went into the draw for one person to win $500 worth of craft beer sponsored by us. Um, if, if you're out of New South Wales, it'll get shipped to your door. You just tell us what you'd like to order um, and we'll get that shipped to your door. So I haven't seen who the winner is. This was drawn earlier in the day, but I will do a dr drum roll and that will activate my assistant to come and give me the envelope with the winner. So here we go. This is for $500 worth of craft beer. This is the winner. The one person out of over six and a half thousand of you that participated that gets to take home the loot of $500 worth of craft beer. The winner of the Australian Craft Beer Survey of 2016, $500 of awesome craft beer. We present this to Aiden Birch. So Aiden, if you're watching, fantastic. Uh, you'll know that you've won. Um, if you're not, we'll be in contact um, because you've uh, popped us your email address. You'll also get a copy of the survey results. Um, so Aiden Birch, big congratulations. To everyone else, a big thank you for participating in the survey. We really do appreciate it. As I mentioned at the very start, the brewers in the industry, um, everyone's going to be able to take these results 
you guys will all get sent the results if you participated. Even if you didn't, you'll be able to access them. We're going to put them up on our website. Uh, we're not charging anything for it. We just want to try and develop the best craft um, beer industry that we possibly can with the help of the local breweries and the local industry uh, and obviously great customers like yourselves that continue to enjoy great craft beer. So if you weren't Aidan Birch, um, my condolences, Aidan Birch, big congratulations. Um, big congratulations to all our winners um, this evening, um, all the guys that took out the awards. It's, um, I guess, big kudos for all the hard work that you guys put into your businesses and into the craft beer community. Please keep up the good work. People love it. Um, and, uh, and yeah, we look forward to actually doing – actually, one thing I should mention is this is the inaugural study, and we are looking to do this um, over the coming years. So in, in our previous life as researchers, we always know that you kind of take a baseline measurement, and then it's really interesting to kind of see how uh, an industry sort of evolves over time. So we'll be looking to do it again in 2017. We hope that uh, everyone at home and, and out there in Australia does participate – uh, it'll be in a very similar format that we did it um, this year so that we can compare results 2016, 2017 and into the future. So the results will be on our website as I mentioned. Um, now, this video normally on Thursdays is about all the new beers that have landed in store and online. Obviously we didn't do that tonight, but if you go to our website, you can go to the in-store and growlers page, oh, sorry, the latest beer arrivals page, and you will be able to see all the latest beers that have arrived. We've got some really, really limited stuff from the Garage Project in New Zealand. Uh, almost all of them have got a limit of one bottle or one can per person, uh, and that's because we've got such a limited amount, and we try and share the craft beer love. Um, if you can't, if you don't want to buy it online, you want to rather pick it up in the store, don't forget you can also purchase online and select in-store pickup that secures you the stock. Um, and just so if you, you don't miss out, if you want you to come in next week, all stock might be gone by then. If I get a bit of a chance tomorrow, I will do a bit of a review on some of those beers or introduce you to some of those beers. Like always, thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you like this special episode of Thursday, a live broadcast on Facebook, a little bit different to the norm. Um, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your week and whatever you're drinking, happy drinking. Cheers, guys.